Yo, everybody! Welcome back to the West Bromwich Albion career mode, and we're in episode 85 right now. And I mentioned that in in towards the end of the last episode, this is the final episode as West Brom manager for me. We're gonna continue in the same save. I didn't. I don't know if I actually mentioned that when I said I'm leaving West Brom, but we're continuing in the same save. We're gonna go to a different team. I'm probably gonna bring some of my players over with me from West Brom but this is the final episode and if you missed the last episode check it out because we are faltering right now we need to step up because we've only three games left in the season we have only a two-point lead over Chelsea and I have no I would have never guessed that that was gonna happen earlier on in the season but we're playing against Stoke and we managed to get off to a flying start which is what exactly what we needed we need to pick up wins from these last three games because six minutes well six minutes in Sturridge done excellent slid it through to Jonathan Lecco and he finished so calmly so so easily so collected with his finish but like I can't stress how important it is we need these points we need them if we was to throw away the lead I couldn't forgive myself but Munayin cuts in off the left hand side lets a shot fly aims for that near post which was left open by the keeper just a little bit and unfortunate that he couldn't sneak it and it hits the post. And Munain again getting up to win the header and this time hitting the crossbar. But Sturridge gets on the end of the loose ball and fires it into the top corner. Gets us 2-0 up. 12 minutes in. And to be honest, at this point I was thinking maybe I should maybe I should show, show, show the sliders and shit and difficulty to make sure people know I ain't cheating. Because it is a little bit... It is a little bit fishy, I'll admit, that we've been struggling all this time. And then exactly when we really need a win, we get off to such a great start. By the end of the day, I thought, fuck it, man. I ain't, I ain't showing no goddamn sliders. Y'all better just trust me. But Stoke came back 40 minutes in before the next chance. And their shot just wide of the post. Yeah, I thought, fuck it. With me, the most important thing for my career was I aim for realism. I want to aim for realism in all aspects. Whether it be transfers... Gameplay, like giving it a broadcast feel type, and putting showing my sliders that that just kills all types of realism. That's why I don't really want to show anything like that on my series, especially on the video. But yeah, so I decided not to. So y'all just gonna have to believe me when I say that my sliders are difficult as fuck. I just got off to a flying start. Still were able to pull one back, but we did kill the game off 71 minutes in. When Jonathan Lecco got down the right hand side one more time and buried it into the back of the net. So you can see here we're going to pick up three points from this game. However, Chelsea's result is vital because picking up three points doesn't mean anything. If Chelsea pick up three points too, we still need to continue going into the final two games so we can win the Premier League and lift that trophy. But we're continuing to try and pile some pressure on Stoke City as Bezic slides it through into Maz Henriksen returning from injury and he just caps it off. With a goal of his own. 4-1. We're beating Stoke City. And that was it for that game. Like I said, we picked up the three points. Y'all already know. We got Jankovic and Vandermeer continuing their training. And Nino Jankovic joins Vandermeer as an 82 overall. Now, Vandermeer is the guy, man. Vandermeer is that guy. But his potential isn't It isn't sky high. His potential, I think, is like mid-80s. 84, 85. So he's getting there. Jankovic is the guy with all the potential. Jankovic has potential at 90+. plus. So, training this guy, important. Keeping him, getting games, important. But we got the next game against Everton right here. Oh, my God. I got the largest buck right there getting ready to come up. But you can see here, Chelsea did win their game also. Still only two points between us coming into the final two games of the season. And this is the lineup we went with. The strongest side, more or less, that we could field other than... Um, Zua is playing in, in the midfield and also Victor Moses down the left rather than Munain. But again, off to a good start as we win ourselves a penalty. Eight minutes in, Jonathan Lecco was taken out down his right hand side by Le Marchand. And it's just uh, it's, a, it's a tackle that really didn't need to be made. It didn't need to be made, but Daniel Sturridge is stepping up to take the penalty. Can he put it away? Yes, he can. Straight down the middle. Daniel Sturridge taking no chances with that penalty. Puts us 1 0 up. And if we can win this game, again, one step closer to win the league. If we win this game and Chelsea don't win theirs, even if they draw, 
we've, we've got the league sewn up because with our goal difference, the amount of goals we've scored this season, there's no way Chelsea win it on goal difference. So Chelsea have to win this game if they want to win the league. They have to win this game. And we're going to put even more pressure on them by winning this game. That's exactly the plan. 30 minutes in though, Everton decide they want to come back and cause some more trouble. Some poor defending letting Morales get through and he crosses back post to Ross Barkley who's trying to mess up our whole operation by getting them back level and trying to stop us from winning the league. Now if we draw this game and Chelsea win obviously goal difference again. It, come, it comes back down to goal difference. So we're still, we're still strong but if we lose this game that's where the trouble starts. We're coming forward again Joshua Kimmich finds Moses. He plays it into Deli Ali, and Deli Ali finds the back of the net pretty much right after Everton pulled one back, right after we took the lead. So Deli Ali doing a good job, good finish, scoring another goal to cap off a brilliant debut season for Deli Ali. He's been absolutely magnificent for us. So brilliant, well worked goal again, but Everton just didn't have a man right there to, to actually mark Deli Ali. It's poor defending from them. But I'm going to take it. I'm going to be happy with what we got. 17 Premier League goals for Deli Ali. Amazing debut season for this guy. He is an absolute... I love playing with him. Absolutely love playing with him. If I don't take him to my next team with me, I'm going to miss him. But we'll see what happens. We still need to focus on West Brom Albion. 60 minutes in. It's pulled back. Barkley finds Vieto off the inside of the post. How lucky did we just get right there? Playing it into Goa. He plays it across to Van der Meer. We still got a few options. Van der Meer cuts inside. Finds a little bit of space and forces a save out of Guzman, the keeper. Just 10, well, just over 10 minutes left to play of regular time. Beautiful play from Van der Meer. Cutting it back onto his left foot. And forcing the save out of the keeper. But again, we're just, just under 10 minutes to play now. Everton throwing some players forward. I don't know what they're playing for if they're fighting for something. Get the ball down left-hand side. Victor Moses cuts in onto his right foot. The ball finds Mads Henriksen eventually. He crosses it back into the box. Falls back for Moses. He takes it onto his left foot. And it's saved by Guzman. Everton still have a chance to get something out of this game. We can't bury it. We just need to bury it. Because if we win this game and Chelsea drop points, the league is ours. And all we need is that. And Phil Jones right there buries the game. Assures that we take three points out of it. But what really matters is the Chelsea result. And five minutes to go until we find out Phil Jones gets himself a goal. And 89 minutes on the clock, we're trying to come forward again. We play it out to Christiansen, trying to take Everton on the counter-attack. Christiansen plays an absolute peach of a ball, taken down magnificently by the Danish winger, Mads Henriksen. And he passes it into the back of the net. And we did win the game. And you can see... Chelsea did drop points. I think they lost their match. They must have lost their match because we won the league. We are the, we became the league winners right here. And to be honest, after seeing this, you wouldn't be able to tell. And I decided to just, just skip the whole final game and show you some of the celebrations. We drew with Watford 2-2 in the final game of the season. And we're league winners Finally, for the first and only time in this series, we're going to win the league with West Brom. A little bit less than I'd hope, but only four seasons. I mean, it's not, it's not bad at all to only win the league once in four seasons. Taking West Brom from where they were at the beginning to where they are now, Premier League winners. Let's hope we can end our journey with West Brom as Champions League winners. We still got the FA Cup final and the Champions League final to watch. I mean, to play to see if we can win it, but... I'm still not going to tell you which team. I have decided. I mean, I have, yeah, I've decided which team I'm going to join. I'm not going to let you know. I'm going to, you're going to find out when we upload the first part of that new journey. But I'm going to let you guys enjoy watching your West Bromwich Albion and Captain Andres Christensen raise the Premier League trophy, baby. I hope you guys are happy with seeing that. And then I'm going to show you guys a few. I think I'll show you the Premier League table in the episode. I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Love you guys. I'll see you for the next episode, which will be the FA Cup and the Champions League final live. Peace.
Yeah, you do get the feeling with these boys they are a proper unit. There's really good team spirit within that just.